more more come through what did you do I did nothing the credit is yours I closed that thing how Whatever magic opened the breach in the sky also placed that mark upon your hand. I theorized the mark might be able to close the rifts that have opened in the breach's wake. And it seems I was correct. Meaning it could also close the breach itself. Possibly. It seems you hold the key to our salvation. Good to know. Here I thought we'd be ass deep in demons forever. Varric Tethrus, rogue. Storyteller, and occasionally unwelcome tag along. It's good to meet you, Varric. You may reconsider that stance in time. Oh, I'm sure we'll become great friends in the valley, Chuckles. Absolutely not. Your help is appreciated, Varric, but. Have you been in the valley lately, Seeker? Your soldiers aren't in control anymore. You need me. Ugh. My name is Solus, if there are to be introductions. I am pleased to see you still live. He means I kept that mark from killing you while you slept. You seem to know a great deal about it all. Unlike you, Solus is an apostate. Technically, all mages are now apostates, Cassandra. My travels have allowed me to learn much of the Fade. Far beyond the experience of any Circle Mage. I came to offer whatever help I can give with the Breach. If it is not closed, we are all doomed regardless of origin. And what will you do once this is over? One hopes those in power will remember who helped, and who did not. Cassandra, you should know. The magic involved here is unlike any I have seen. Your prisoner is a mage, but I find it difficult to imagine any mage having such power. Understood. We must get to the forward camp quickly. Well... Bianca's excited. We're clear for the moment. Well done. Whatever that thing on your hand is, it's useful. Sealed, as before. You are becoming quite proficient at this. Let's hope it works on the big one. The fade bleeds into this place. This rift is not sealed, but it is closed, albeit temporarily. I believe that with the mark, the rift can be opened, and then sealed properly and safely. However, opening the rift will likely attract attention from the other side. That means demons! Stand ready! The Chosen of Andraste, a blessed hero sent to save us all. Am I riding in on a shining steed? I would have suggested a griffon, but sadly they're extinct. Joke as you will, posturing is necessary. I've journeyed deep into the fade in ancient ruins and battlefields to see the dreams of lost civilizations. I've watched as hosts of spirits clash to reenact the bloody past in ancient wars both famous and forgotten. Every great war has its heroes. 
I'm just curious what kind you'll be. What do you mean, ruins and battlefields? Any building strong enough to withstand the rigors of time as a history. Every battlefield is steeped in death. Both attract spirits. They press against the veil, weakening the barrier between our worlds. When I dream in such places, I go deep into the Fade. I can find memories no other living being has ever seen. You fall asleep in the middle of ancient ruins. Isn't that dangerous? I do set wards. And if you leave food out for the giant spiders, they are usually content to live and let live. I've never heard of anyone going so far into the Fade. That's extraordinary. Thank you. It's not a common field of study for obvious reasons. Not so flashy as throwing fire or lightning. The thrill of finding remnants of a thousand-year-old dream? I would not trade it for anything. I will stay then. At least until the breach has been closed. Was that in doubt? I am an apostate surrounded by Chantry forces in the middle of a mage rebellion. Cassandra has been accommodated. But you understand my caution. Cassandra trusts you. She won't let anyone put you into a circle against your will. Thank you. I appreciate the thought. But now let us hope either the mages or the Templars have the power to seal the breach. Closing the breach is our primary goal. But I hope we might also discover what was used to create it. Any artifact of such power is dangerous. The destruction of the Conclave proves that much. You don't think whatever created the explosion was destroyed in the blast? You survived, did you not? The artifact that created the breach is unlike anything seen in this age. I will not believe it destroyed until I see the shattered fragments with my own eyes. We would do well to try to recover whatever created the breach. Liliana's people have scoured the area near the blast and found nothing. Whatever the artifact was, it is no longer there. In any case, did you need me for anything? I'd like to know more about you, Solas. Why? You're an apostate, yet you risked your freedom to help the Inquisition. Not the wisest course of action when framed that way. I appreciate the work you're doing, Solas. I just wanted to know more about you. I'm sorry. With so much fear in the air. What would you know of me? Have you always traveled and studied alone? Not at all. I have built many lasting friendships. Spirits of wisdom, possessed of ancient knowledge, happy to share what they had seen. Spirits of purpose helped me search. Even wisps, curious and playful, would point out treasures I might have missed. I don't know of any spirits by those names. They rarely seek this world. When they do, their natures do not often survive exposure to the people they encounter. Wisdom and purpose are too easily twisted to pride and desire. You're saying that you became friends with pride and desire demons? They were not demons for me. Meaning? The fade reflects the mind of the living. If you expect a spirit of wisdom to be a pride demon, it will adapt. And if your mind is free of corrupting influences, if you understand the nature of the spirit, they can be fast friends. I'm impressed that you could become friends with spirits. Anyone who can dream has the potential. Few ever try. My friends comforted me in grief and shared my joy. Yet, because they exist without form, as we understand it, the Chantry declares that spirits are not truly people. Is Cassandra defined by her cheekbones and not her faith? Varric by his chest hair and not his wit. I hadn't thought about it that way. But I see your point. I... Thank you. Few are willing to entertain such a notion. You said you'd traveled to many different places. This world, or its memory, is reflected in the Fade. Dream in ancient ruins? 
you may see a city lost to history. Some of my fondest memories were found in crumbling cities, long picked dry by treasure seekers. The best of the battlefields. Spirits press so tightly on the veil that you can slip across with but a thought. Any place in particular? I dreamt at Ostagar. I witnessed the brutality of the Darkspawn and the valor of the Ferelden warriors. I saw Alistair and the hero of Ferelden light the signal fire, and Loghain's infamous betrayal of Caelan's forces. I've heard the stories. It would be interesting to hear what it was really like. That's just it. In the Fade, I see reflections created by spirits who react to the emotions of the warriors. One moment, I see heroic wardens lighting the fire, and a power-mad villain sneering as he lets King Caelan fall. The next, I see an army overwhelmed and a veteran commander refusing to let more soldiers die in a lost cause. And you can't tell which is real? It is the Fade. They are all real. What made you start studying the Fade? I grew up in a village to the north. There was little to interest the young man, especially one gifted with magic. But as I slept, the spirits of the Fade showed me glimpses of wonders I had never imagined. I treasured my dreams. Being awake out of the Fade became troublesome. Did spirits try to tempt you? No more than a brightly colored fruit is deliberately tempting you to eat it. I learned how to defend myself from more aggressive spirits, and how to interact safely with the rest. I learned how to control my dreams with full consciousness. There was so much I wanted to explore. I gather you didn't spend your entire life dreaming. No. Eventually, I was unable to find new areas in the Fade. Why? Two reasons. First, the Fade reflects the world around it. Unless I traveled, I would never find anything new. Second, the Fade reflects and is limited by our imagination. To find interesting areas, one must be interested. Is this why you joined the Inquisition? I joined the Inquisition because we were all in terrible danger. If our enemies destroy the world, I would have nowhere to lay my head while dreaming of the Fade. I wish you luck. Thank you. In truth, I have enjoyed experiencing more of life to find more of the Fade. How so? You train your will to control magic and withstand possession. Your indomitable focus is an enjoyable side benefit. You have chosen a path whose steps you do not dislike because it leads to a destination you enjoy. As have I. I'd like to know more about the Breach. Simply put, it is a tear in the veil between this world and the Fade, allowing spirits to enter the world physically. Small tears occur naturally when magic weakens the veil, or when spirits cluster at an area that has seen many deaths. But your mark allows you to exert some control over the Breach. That means it was created deliberately. I'd like to know more about the Veil. Circle mages call it a barrier between this world and the Fade. But according to my studies in ancient elven lore, that is a vast oversimplification. Without it, imagine if spirits entered freely. The Fade was not a place one went, but a state of nature like the wind. It sounds like it would be wonderful. And dangerous. But yes, a world where imagination defines reality. Where spirits are as common as trees or grass. Instead, spirits are strange and fearful, and the Fade is a terrifying world touched only by mages and dreamers. I am glad that I'm not alone in seeing the beauty of such a world, along with the obvious peril. I'd like to know more about demons. Your circle says that demons hate the natural world and seek to bring their chaos and destruction to the living. But such simplistic labels misconstrue their motivations and in so doing, do all a great disservice. Spirits wish to join the living. And a demon is that wish gone wrong. Is there a way to coexist? To live with them, if not in peace, at least without such active confrontation? Not in the world we know today. The veil creates a barrier that makes true understanding most unlikely. But the question is a good one, and it matters that you thought to ask.
So we have gained the mages. Excellent. They should be able to seal the breach. You are certain you experienced time travel. Could it have been an illusion? A trick of the Fade? I've been to the Fade before. I'd know it. Point taken. What an amazing gift. It is vital the Inquisition succeeded to avoid the future you witness. I'm surprised you're not more interested in your own future. I know enough. If that future happened, then I and Cassandra, Cullen and the rest failed to stop this Elder One. Speaking of which, you should ready yourself. For? This Elder One. You have now interfered with his plans twice. Once at the Temple of Sacred Ashes, and now again at Redcliffe. A being who aspires to godhood is unlikely to ignore such an affront. A word. A wise woman, worth heeding. Her kind understand the moments that unify a cause. Or fracture it. The orb Corypheus carried. The power he used against you. It is Elven. Corypheus used the orb to open the breach. Unlocking it must have caused the explosion that destroyed the Conclave. I do not yet know how Corypheus survived. Nor am I certain how people will react when they learn of the orb's origin. All right. What is it, and how do you know about it? They were foci, used to channel ancient magics. I have seen such things in the Fade, old memories of older magic. Corypheus may think it of it. His empire's magic was built on the bones of my people. Knowing or not, he risks our alliance. I cannot allow it. This whole mess is confusing. I can see how elves might be an easy target. History would agree. But there are steps we can take to prevent such a distraction. By attacking the Inquisition, Corypheus has changed it. Changed you. Scout to the north. Be their guide. There is a place that waits for a force to hold it. There is a place where the Inquisition can build, grow. I'm interested in what you told me of yourself in your studies. If you have time, I'd like to hear more. You continue to surprise me. All right, let us talk. Preferably somewhere more interesting than this.
Why here? Avon is familiar. It will always be important to you. We talked about that already. I sat beside you while you slept, studying the anchor. How long can it take to look at a mark on my hand? A magical mark of unknown origin? Tied to a unique breach in the veil? Longer than you might think. I ran every test I could imagine. Searched the Fade, yet found nothing. Cassandra suspected duplicity. She threatened to have me executed as an apostate if I didn't produce results. Cassandra's like that with everyone. <laughs> yes. You were never going to wake up? How could you? Mortals sent physically through the Fade. I was frustrated, frightened. The spirits I might have consulted had been driven away by the breach. Although I wished to help, I had no faith in Cassandra, or she in me. I was ready to flee. The breach threatened the whole world. Where did you plan to go? Some place far away, where I might research a way to repair the breach before its effects reached me. I never said it was a good plan. I told myself, one more attempt to seal the rifts. I tried and failed. No ordinary magic would affect them. I watched the rifts expand and grow, resigned myself to flee, and then... It seems you hold the key to our salvation. You had sealed it with a gesture. And right then, I felt the whole world change. It was that impressive to see me awake. You had walked in the Fade. I have explored the Fade more than anyone alive. But even I can only visit in dreams. But you, you might have been able to visit me here while awake. What do you mean? Where do you think we were? This isn't real. That's a matter of debate. Probably best discussed after you wake up. Sleep well? I've never done anything like that before. Do you regularly talk to people in dreams? No. Consider that one more rule you have effortlessly broken in your rise to power. I had no idea that the Anchor would allow you to dream with such focus. It is truly remarkable. But I am reasonably certain we are awake now. And if you wish to discuss anything, I would enjoy talking. I'd like to hear more about what you saw in your exploration of the Fade. I would be happy to share it with you. Tell me about the old memories you found in the Fade. I saw a savage human horde go marching toward the battlefront. They sang a soldier's hymn to keep formation. Primal music shook the ground. These savage, unwashed warriors carried harmonies no Chantry choirs mastered. Though their cause was all but hopeless, they sang songs that made the spirits weep. Tell me about a spirit you encountered. I met a friendly spirit who observed the dreams of village girls as love first blossomed in their adolescence. With subtlety, she steered them all to village boys with gentle hearts, who would return their love with gentle kindness. The matchmaker, so I called her. That small village never knew its luck. Tell me about the old ruins you explored. I found the ruin of Baron Dua, a lost to Winter City buried deep beneath a dead and barren wasteland. Volcanic ash had sealed it tight. In one dark moment, every living creature in the city seared and smothered. They were statues in the ashes, like a mold made to recall the lost.
something wrong with your tea? It is tea. I detest this stuff. But this morning, I need to shake the dreams from my mind. I may also need a favor. You just have to ask. One of my oldest friends has been captured by mages, forced into slavery. I heard the cry for help as I slept. When your friend was captured, how did he... she... It. It? My friend is a spirit of wisdom. Unlike the spirits clamoring to enter our world through the rifts, it was dwelling quite happily in the Fade. It was summoned against its will, and wants my help to gain its freedom and return to the Fade. Do you have any idea what the mages want with your friend? No. It knows a great deal of lore and history, but a mage could learn that simply by speaking to it in the Fade. It is possible that they seek information it does not wish to give, and intend to torture it. All right, let's go get your friend. Thank you. I got a sense of my friend's location before I awoke. I'll mark it on our map. Tell me about the old ruins you explored. I found an ancient dwarven tig no longer sheltered by the stone. An earthquake had exposed it all to daylight. A thousand dwarven corpses lay, the victims of a dark spawn horde, their last stand marked by one great ring of armor. In the middle, one small body, clutching tightly to a small stuffed toy. Tell me about a spirit you encountered. The Alamari crossed the Frostback Mountains to escape a beast they called the Shadow Goddess in their story. I met the spirit that they fled. She walked the Fade along the southern tundra, weeping lonely and forgotten. Great for Elden formed because a lonely spirit drove her prey away. Tell me about the old memories you found in the Fade. I saw a dwarf emerge into the light of day and shield his eyes against the sun. The first time he had seen it. Tears were streaming from his eyes. I thought them from the blazing light, until I saw the rock he held so tightly. Then he laid the rock down gently, and he left it as he walked away. Share it. Tell me about the old ruins you explored. I found in the Kokari wilds a humble cottage far removed from any of the simple chastened tribesmen. The trees and weeds did not reclaim the hope. Nor did the chastened dare to come and steal the trinkets still remaining. It was empty, long abandoned, but the world feared that she might return. Tell me about a spirit you encountered. I found an ancient spirit who had once been undisputed king of almost every land I had discovered. Like pride or rage, it was the fade's reflection of a feeling. When I asked which one it was, the spirit faltered. They have forgotten, said the spirit. There remains no word for what I was. Tell me about the old memories you found in the Fade. I saw a young Canari working in a simple kitchen, baking bread as she was ordered every morning. In every loaf, she broke the rules. She'd take a pinch of sugar and fold it into the center, like a secret. And this act of small rebellion brought a shining smile across her face. You said that you believed the orb is Elven. I never would have believed a Devinter Mage could unlock such a powerful relic. It clearly enhances his abilities, giving him access to power he should never have known. Like the power to control the Archdemon? Indirectly, one assumes. Nothing in any law connects my people to the old god dragons who became Archdemons. What do you think Corypheus will do next? You shamed him when you destroyed Haven. Spoiled his glorious victory. It would be worse to acknowledge that you had done so. We must continue on his course or show weakness. He will return to his plans to throw Ole into chaos and then conquer it for Devinter. You're sure that's what he'll do? As certain as is possible. Assuming I can plausibly predict a man who seeks to rise to godhood. And can you? The key is understanding this no real god need prove himself. Anyone who tries is mad or liar. His deception will undo him, as it has done countless fools before. 
What can you tell me about the source of Corypheus's power? According to the lore, the ancient magistars of the Vinter received guidance from the old gods. Corypheus commands a false archdemon, a corrupted old god. This suggests he no longer sees himself as their minion. Some of his unique power comes from the corruption of the Blight. The rest may come from the orb he carries. <laughs>